my neighbor had a maple tree fall in his yard. So he asked me if I wanted the wood, and of course I went up and collected it. When we looked at the tree, we noticed it was a cluster of four maple trees all together. And water had gotten down in between the four trees and caused it to rot. So this tree literally snapped off at ground level. So he wanted to take down the rest of the trees. And he called a he called a professional tree service to come in and do that because they brought a, a wood chipper and they got rid of all the tops and everything. But anyway, I wound up with all the wood. And this is all maple. Some of it is in good shape. Some of it's uh, well, it's been dead for a while, so it's good to burn right away. Anyway, we are going to use some of this to push the limits of the Cord King 1820 firewood processor. It's a great machine, tough as nails, and it can handle just about anything you throw at it. People wonder, you know, what can it do? How, how powerful is it? What is the maximum diameter of log that you can put in it? So we're gonna find all that out. So the last time I was home, I ran the machine and uh, I didn't get a chance to do the cleanup. I need to, I need to empty my catch pan. There's a, a sawdust pan under there. Need to get those emptied out. Somebody put a couple of little logs up there, so these need to be split. My sawdust bin is fine. It's got plenty of room left in it. So this machine has a 35 horsepower gasoline engine. It has a three-section hydraulic pump. Somebody was asking me what kind of a coupling this had. I don't know whether they were just trying to BS me or what the deal was, but anyway, there's the coupling between the engine and the pump. I don't know what you call that. There's a name on it there, which I can't really read. If that person wants to know what this is, they can call Cord King and get them to explain it. Anyway, so the machine can handle a maximum 20 foot length log. And that's only if you put the heavy end up towards the saw. From the tip of the saw to pretty much where you can effectively cut is about 22 inches. That's pushing it. 20 inches is about, about as much as you can really do. So I would say a 20 inch maximum diameter log is all you're gonna get out of this thing. One of the problems, not really a problem, limitation we'll say, is that when you cut a log that is literally as big as the saw is long, when that log drops, it has to drop straight down into the splitter box. If that log tilts and drops in crooked or on end, it's a major hassle to move it because there's a limited amount of room in here to move the log around. And believe me, I've done it. It's a real pain. Um, so my recommendation is an absolute maximum of 18 inch diameter logs. A 14 inch diameter log is almost ideal for this machine. The saw has no problem cutting through it. Six way wedge, which this machine has a six way, um, will split that log just right. So the pieces that come out of the wedge are just the right size for stacking. Once you get beyond that 16 inch diameter, the pieces coming off the wedge are going to be too big, like this. So what happens here is this piece is so thick that it won't dry properly. It won't, it'll take way too long to dry. So those wind up 
getting re-split or getting sold as boiler wood. Watch out for bees. Uh, yeah, you got bees in there. I do? Yes. I just saw one fly out. Take the whole thing down. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> Let's get the other umbrella. Okay, take the whole thing down. Just pick the whole... You have to pick up the whole metal post and lay it on the ground somewhere. <laughs> nice, okay. This machine which is the M1820. I'm thinking 18 is the 18 is the maximum log diameter. 20 is the maximum cut length. So when you're cutting, you can't go beyond 20 inches because again, it's when it drops off, it's it's got to land in here straight. And you have, to, and it has to be able to be split here. You go any more than that, it's going to hit the top of the wedge. Anyway, the other thing we've got here, it's not the smallest of the machines, but it's on the lower end. And the splitting ram, I believe, is a 22 ton, 21 ton. I have to look it up. There are very, very few things that it won't split. Now, I've gotten logs jammed in here, and we're probably going to see that today. But that ram will split most things. And we've got some tricks and techniques to make it split things that it doesn't want to split. So, but that is, that is another limitation. It's only a 20-something ton splitting ram. Okay, so that covers the machine. Now we got to do a little bit of clean up and maintenance here and then we're going to get started so i put this piece up on the infeed and then i realized this one end which i didn't really see it when i picked it up uh this is way way too big so just to give you some idea eh 28 inches roughly 28 inches diameter this is an and it's a knot also or a crotch so 28 by 17. So that's too big. That there's no way that's going to go through. And even if I did get it, even if I did get it to go through here, I wouldn't be able to cut all the way through it. So I'm going to have to pull this back off, which is not that much fun. And then uh, I'm going to have to cut this back. Probably a cut here. Probably another cut here. Just to get it small enough that it'll go through the machine. On the small end of this, we are still 17 inches. Yeah, 17 inches in diameter. So this is pretty good size. Pretty good size chunk. So now I gotta lift it off of there. and a half inches that's still pretty big but it should go through the machine
just in case I have problems with this, I'm not gonna put any more wood on the live deck. So if you're working with really big pieces, either do one at a time until you're sure that it's going okay. Uh, but if you put more than, more than one piece on the live deck, you might wind up taking all that off of there <laughs> to get to the piece that's jammed or stuck. So just consider that a, an option. I'll be honest, it is way too hot out here to be doing this. Hey, there it is. I don't know, I didn't notice this. I thought that was a piece of bark. That's a piece of metal. I'm not sure what that is, but it goes right in the middle. I don't see it down here. Ah, that's nice. Well, here's the chain. I don't know if I can get this to focus on it. This isn't real good at doing close-ups. I'll get some I'll get some close-up pictures. It's pretty well <laughs> it's pretty well chewed up. Um gonna have to take a good bit of material off get these back into shape what I'm doing now is I'm looking for the tooth that has the most damage get some red dykem we'll dykem the dykem the tooth so I'm going to mark the ones that look really bad that had a that had a piece of uh, that had a piece of metal from that angle iron stuck in it. 
that I am going to zip through the rest of this off camera because there's a lot of teeth to do and it's going to be very time consuming. So I'll come back when we're done. So I went through and checked and adjusted a few of the rakers, the ones that were the worst. And probably didn't get every tooth to be the same length with this. So we're going to put it back on the machine and see how it goes. If it's still too messed up, I will just put a new chain on it. So we've recovered from chopping into a piece of angle iron. The saw blade has been resharpened and it appears to be working just fine. After that, little fiasco, the bar oil pump stopped pumping. So I had to clean out I had to clean out the the pump. I had to change the filter and I had to clean out the tank because the tank had some crud in the bottom and it was causing some blockages. So anyway, that took me a couple hours to do that. The next day. Yesterday while I was doing my maintenance, I also dumped the sawdust bin and I did a quick video on that just so you could see how I accomplished that task. We've got a log in the infeed and we've got some more logs on the live deck. We've got a big beast right here. So this log is 17 roughly by 14. It's not exactly consistent throughout. These are nice and small. Here's an eight inch. This one's gonna be a challenge. So this piece here, you can see we've got a, a stub sticking out. I didn't cut that off. Maybe I should have. But we'll see it should probably it'll go through but there's 20 almost 22 inches that way 15 inches that way so a lot of this i'm going to speed through because it's not really pushing this machine to the limit when we get to that last log over there that'll be a good example of what this particular machine can handle. small piece of wood behind the log and that changes where the ram puts the most pressure on it, causing it to break in a different place and sometimes that helps the log split.
This was a seriously unruly piece of wood, and it really fought with me the whole time.
as you can see, that was probably the biggest log that I comfortably want to put through the machine. It could have gone another inch in diameter, but you can see the trouble you have. If that log were to land on end, it's a real pain to move it in this in the splitter box. This first piece wasn't nearly as bad as it looked because it was a crotch and it broke in half when I cut it. This is about as large of a chunk of wood as you want to try to put through the machine. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting a piece of split wood behind the log and that changes where the ram places most of its pressure on the, on the log and that helps the log split easier. Alright, that's a pretty good example of what this machine is capable of. You noticed in a couple instances I had a log that kind of got jammed and what I did was I put a small piece in between the splitter ram and the back of the log and what that did is it changed where the ram was applying pressure so it was kind of shoving half the log through until it broke and then it pushed the rest of it through so that's a good technique to get logs that are partially jammed unstuck if you get a real big jam that's a different story and I'll probably show you one of them at some point here if, I, if it happens to me. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.